that me and my wife were specialists in sustainability and in those days that was 25 years back. He asked us to come back. That's the biggest ego massage a young, young man can get or young man and woman can get. So we came back thinking we would help our country. Unfortunately, we couldn't do much. He was a politician. He was a good man, but couldn't do much for us. So we were on our own. So we started with our NGO, EcoCent Ekni, which is International Center for Networking, Ecology, Education, and Reintegration, and wanted to do something for our country. And we said, what do we look at? Uh, I, as you see, I am chairman of a German company, Galicia, which is one of the big solar companies offering EVC services. But I am not going to talk on solar, I am going to talk on solar thermal, where I spent 25 years. And I am sure the time for PV in industrial use will come. It's not yet. At present, it's all either rooftop, rooftop or grid connected. The, uh, Galicia is all over the world. India is more fortunate than uh, Germany. As you see here, uh, if you look at the energy consumption requirement, about 37 percent energy goes into getting high temperature. And if you look at it, India has the largest scope, India, China, because we are in the sunny belt. And uh, if you look at the application wise in, in India, it could be as much as uh, 30 to 40 percent of the energy. In Germany, it was only 20 percent. Here, it could be 40 percent, but it could be used. I will take you through the journey, means how we got into solar thermal and into solar concentrators. Uh, when we started as an NGO, we were shocked to see that 50% of the Indian population, not only Indian, but the world population cooks on open fire. Cooking in the kitchen is the third largest killer. So we said, how do we do that? And we realized that it was not just about cooking, it was about also health, because people did not have enough energy to boil water. 70% of the disease are water water. So we used that technology which was available, and that was the box cooker. And we found out that this technology, though very good, functional, and cost effective, was not being used. Only 500,000 solar cookers in India, which is nothing for a country of 1 billion population. So this, why not? And then we found out that people wanted to cook very quickly, people wanted to fry, people wanted to make chapati, which was not possible. So I went back to Germany to my colleague, Dr. Seifert, and said, hey, you had showed me a solar cooker at that time saying you could do all this, but I had rejected it because I was a city boy. And when I saw the solar cooker, I said, oh, it's going to take my stupid place out because in Bombay, the place is sold in square millimeter, not in square feet. So a solar cooker can never be installed in a city like Bombay. But now living in villages, I realized space was not a problem, wood was a problem. So we went back and brought a technology. Again, that was my first interaction with solar concentrator. I'm not a process engineer. I'm a process engineer. I'm not a solar man. But I sort of walked myself into solar energy by getting technologies from Germany, through GTCL, through friends, and did. So that was my first interaction with solar concentrator, where you concentrate energy, you have a high temperature, you put a cooking vessel in the focus, you can get 250 degrees centigrade, now you can fry, you can make chapati, you can cook very fast. In 30 minutes, you have a pressure cooker vessel. So I thought, now I will get a Nobel Prize. I have a technology which people can use. All of a sudden, the problem was not technology. The problem is people who can afford it do not want it. Because they have LPG gas, because subsidized, they have electricity, they have diesel. And people who wanted it could not afford it. So I have a problem, I have a product, but no people who can buy it. So what do I do? So I was already not an NGO anymore. I had started a company called Gadia Solar to earn my money to do my NGO activity. So I said, now I have to do a product which people will buy. And my middle class woman will be the people who will buy, or the rich. So I started talking to them and I said, you know what, Deepak, you are a typical man. You want to sit in the comforts of your air conditioned room and you want us, the woman, to go into the sun. Why don't you bring a technology the sun comes in the kitchen? I said, okay. I went back to Germany as always. Whenever I require anything, I go to Germany. For Mr. Dr. Seifert, I met Mr. Scheffler. And he said, no problem. I have a friend, Dr. Mr. Scheffler, who has a technology. And you can put the dish outside and you can reflect the light to the small opening in your kitchen and you can cook. So with Mr. Scheffler, we built the first dish in 1994. And uh, we thought, okay, now we saw the problem. But the problem was, I could not sell the solar cooker which was 110 euro. Now I had a technology which was costing me 2000 euro. So it was a whole size of solar cooker. So my middle class woman ran away. I had a product, again, no people. So I said, what do I do? So I moved to buy. Next level, I said, I'm not going to sell it to individual. I will sell it to communities. And you need to cook for 50 people, 100 people. So this is what we converted. We converted it to a community cooker, where with two dishes you see here, we started targeting midday programs. Schools, where you have to cook for 50 people, 100 people. In India, the government to bring school children to the school gave them subsidized money. I'm happy to see Dr. Shastri sitting there and Mr. Ashwin Kumar, the other people who actually that have supported me. And so we started with this technology. It has been very successful because of government support, because of people accepting it. The advantage is now you can cook in the comforts of the kitchen. You can cook the way you cook on an LPG cylinder. You can do on, off, high flame, low flame. Because when you want to cook, you don't only want high temperature, you want control temperature. So with a small lever on the left, you can actually control the light that's coming in your kitchen. So if it goes open, half open, only half the light comes in. If it's full open, full light comes in. So it's like gas, on, off, high flame, low flame. 
that people say, oh, the problem is we can only cook with a day, but when we come back, it's already night, what can we do? So again, we have to solve the technology. So we brought developed a solar storage system. This was also in 1996 with Mr. Scheffler. So this was the first metal storage system which was developed in India or in the world over, where you could store the energy into metal block and cook at night. And then I was very happy to see Brahma Kumaris. In 1997, Brahma Kumaris came to me, Mr. Gopshapna, uh, Mr. Gopshapna, Mr. Shapna, with Golo Pills, who is the charge of Brahma Kumaris. He said, Deepak, I want to cook for 1,200 people. I said, great, buy 15 or buy dishes, you can cook for 1,200 people. And he said, no, if I've got 15 dishes, I have got 15 people to cook with 15 vessels, I don't want that. Why don't you put dish on the terrace and reflect that at one point, and I can cook in a big vessel, you know, like you cook in Indian marriages. And I said, that's not possible. We only have technology where we can bring the light into it. So I went back to Germany to a company where I was working called HTT and then HTT said, why do you want to bring light into the kitchen? You want to bring heat into the kitchen? So that was the first time that we developed a technology where you don't bring light in the kitchen, but heat in the kitchen, you form the steam. And I went to MNRE. I'm sorry at that time MNRE said, get lost. We don't want to support you because that's never been done. If it was so good, someone must have done it. So why do we support you? I don't think it will be possible. So I went to GTC and GTC said, oh, no problem. How much does it cost? 100,000 euro. Fine, we will do it for you. And that was the first system which was funded by GTC to do a steam cooking system. It was installed at Brahma Kumari. Luckily it worked. Brahma Kumari was so happy that we built another system for them for 15,000 people, that is 30,000 meals, uh, where the Brahma Kumari is manufacturing themselves. I transferred that technology to Brahma Kumari so that they could manufacture it locally because they were good technocrats, they were good engineers. And I'm happy to see they have now done even better than what I have done. They are going for 60 square meter dish. So this is what you do now, you go back, you see there are two dishes reflecting light onto a heat exchanger, you produce steam and then steam is piped to the kitchen and it goes into the kitchen. You have two type of vessels, you have got steam vessel where you can directly inject the steam and you can cook rice, the vegetables, or you have a jacketed vessel where you can cook boiled milk or something. As I was telling yesterday, we don't want to have milk which is diluted. If you put directly steam into your milk, our milk one has already put water into the milk. So you get only water and not milk. So now we actually have double jacket, so you don't put water into your milk and just get milk or some diluted milk. So the Tirupati system, again what we realized was it was not only concentrator. You have to learn civil engineering, you have to learn how to transfer the loads because now I've got 160 ships sitting onto the terrace. So you have to make sure that your building does not collapse because of that 160 tons. You have to make sure that each and every dish is designed for 160 to 180 km over wind speed. Because each dish is a sail, 16 square meter. You have to make sure that your building does not collapse. So this is the city system, Shady again. And then this is at IBM. We moved, which I'm glad you know, Stefan covered all what, I, what we did in our life. Because when we started looking at new markets, we said, whom do we sell? And the problem was economics. He was talking about five years payback in India. Anything more than three years don't even come to us. Industry don't want anything more than three years. So we went to IBM and said, why don't you become green? You know, you are a big corporate, if you become green, green image, green washing, whatever. So they gave us a place, but they said, we will not let you use the place, this was a parking place. For us, each and every parking place is 2.5 lakhs rupees, 250,000 rupees, not allowed. So we built a system on the terrace of the parking place, now the cars are below our solar cookers. So we have to keep on innovating. This was a system which we installed at Ladakh for the Indian Army, because again, the title was a man in green, go green. The Indian soldiers wear the green clothes, you can also become green. The world's largest was highest solar cooker to show even when it is snow, it cooks at minus 15 degrees centigrade. For to use solar energy, you don't require heat, you require light, which is available in Germany, Switzerland, India, everywhere. This was the kitchen for the Indian Army. You can see all the problems, dark kitchen, smoke, soot, everything, where the people get killed. The same kitchen when it becomes solar. We did many systems. We moved from there. We went into a storage system where you know, we use hot oil to store the energy and cook at night to be able to make chapatis and fry. And then we suddenly moved class. He says, why are we always talking about cooking? Why can't we do process industrial heating? The important is that we do more than just cooking. So suddenly we shifted class. Now you can see it's cooking, but it's not cooking the normal food. It's cooking potato chips. Five minutes. Uh, and now what you see here is making potato chips. Not good for my health. You can see I'm fat because I eat that. But it's good for the farmers. If a farmer says potatoes, he gets 6 rupees per kilogram. But if he says potato chips, he gets 400 to 600 rupees per kilogram. You can sit on the product and get better price. So food processing is where I think there is a big, big need for our country and for our people. You can do value addition at a local level. You can create employment at a local level. And you can stop migrations. We started working on solar bakery. So you can see solar bakery where you can make bread, biscuit, cakes, pizzas, all, over, all health food, healthy food or fast food, whatever. But it can be done in solar too. Then we read an article which said that the first and the second world war was because of oil. The third is going to be because of water. So we started, they started working on desalination, drinking water from seawater. India has got 8,040 8, kilometers of seashore. 97% of the water in the world is in sea. 
drinking water of sea water. Bring that thing what nature does. Evaporate the water, condense it, make it rain. But you use all technology, multi effect evaporator to make drinking water. We started looking at industries because temples spend money easily because it's not their money. But we wanted to go and send people to Marwari, to the Jews of India, you know, who can who count the money twice before they give out. Because economics is important, we wanted to sell it to them, we want to live with them, we want to do business with them. So we started working on wastewater evaporation because previously they could put the water into the stream and pollute the water, now it's not possible, so they have to put wastewater treatment plant, which are very expensive, energy intensive, do wastewater evaporation. We did for reliance sludge drying, where you can dry uh, so sludge. This is a solar crematorium to not only you can burn only sludge and waste, but you can also burn dead bodies. Just imagine India, 75% Hindus, each and every body requires 200 to 300 kg of wood. There is not enough wood in the India to burn all the Hindus. Yes. So what do we do? We put electric crematorium, we put gas crematorium. Why not solar? Solar is God, solar is one great father. Solar energy, so this is the world's first solar crematorium at our ashram at Murisha Ashram where I stay. And then we said, oh, it's very easy to give heat when it's hot. Can we do cooling? Yes, we can do cooling. This is a 100 ton air conditioning plant at our hospital in Muniseva Ashram. We are with 100, 100 inches of 25 square meter. We produce steam and with that we do air conditioning. This is the thermic system where we use our steam to run do air conditioning. We chill the water at 60 degrees centigrade, take it to our hospital, cool it to 20 degrees, 18 degree comfort cooling, and take it back. If you see the statistics, 30% of the energy is used for cooling in India. So it could be also done. It's perfect match. Just when it's hot, you want cooling, it's possible in solar energy. Then we started combining technology because we talk of integration. And when we talk of integration, it's always backup system. And backup system is normal diesel or gas. I said, why not use biogas? So I started a company called Excel Renewable, where we have developed the technology where you can do gas, biogas, and you can get well, not only get rid of the waste but convert it into gas, which can be used for boiling, cooking, uh, in processing. But you can also get fertilizers, which can be organic fertilizers. Then we change the technology so that now you can do more than just cow dung because normally biogas was gober gas, only cow dung. Now we can use any organic material, it could be city waste, it could be kitchen waste, it could be fresh food from sugar industries. We scrub it, remove the CO2 and then we bottle it. So now it's possible to combine solar energy with biogas. In India, 70% of people live on agriculture, we have a lot of agriculture waste. India has 3% of the world land area, but 15% of the animal population, cow population. So that's why our cow is holy. In Germany, everyone asks me, why do we not eat all the cows which are eating on the road? Because on one side we have hunger, other side they are cow. And I tell them, you can't eat the Indian cow because there is no meat into it, they are only bones. So we don't need to cut them, you can use actually the cow, biogas out of it, and make a living out of it. So basically the idea is to show there are technologies, there are solutions, there are support systems. Only thing what we need to do is come together, work together and make it an industry perception. For me, it would be great if we are able to bring, just like mobile has reached each and every village, our technology should become a consumer good. Everyone should be able to use solar energy from heating hot water to cooking to boiling to process steam, everything possible with biogas. Thank you very much.